everyone. Welcome to STEAM for Tweens. I'm Miss Jennifer here at the Warrington Library. Today's program is all about the stars in the sky. We're going to learn about the constellations and make two crafts. We're going to draw a constellation, just like you see here. And we're going to make straw rockets like this that you can use your breath to shoot off into outer space. If you picked up your supplies at the library, you'll have everything you need to complete these two projects, except for a pair of scissors, some crayons or magic markers or colored pencils, any sort of colorful art supplies and some tape. Um, if you did not pick up your supplies, you'll also need to gather a white pencil or a piece of chalk or a white crayon, um, some star stickers, or you can always just draw the stars if you prefer, um, a black piece of construction paper, and you'll need the end of a pipette. That's going to be what we use to project our rocket out into space. So you might remember from our Exploring Outer Space program that stars are huge balls of glowing hot gas, like a balloon, but without the rubber outside holding the gas together. Instead, its own gravity holds a star together. Stars are not solid like rocks or liquid like water, but wispy gas, kind of like a cloud or the air that we breathe, but much hotter. So it's so hot that it glows like a hot burner on an electric stove. Stars glow brightly enough that we can see them from very far away. The closest star, our sun, is a million times larger in size than the Earth, but it looks small to us because it is almost 100 million miles away. Other stars we can see in our night sky are hundreds of times farther still. Even though they are huge, like our sun, they look like tiny points just because of their great distance from Earth. A constellation is a geometric pattern of bright stars that appears grouped in the sky. Various cultures throughout history have grouped the stars that appear near one another into patterns and created characters, mythologies, and stories to fit the patterns. Ancient observers named many constellations after gods, heroes, animals, and mythological beings. Different cultures identified different patterns. Tracking the gradual dr drifting of these patterns through the sky helped mark the passing of seasons in the year. Today, scientists recognize 88 constellations. 12 of these that are spread throughout the sky that surrounds the Earth are called the zodiac. Just as the sun doesn't move across the sky, although it might seem that way from our perspective on the ground, the stars in the constellations don't move across the sky either. They just seem to change positions depending on where the Earth is in its rotation. As the Earth revolves around the sun, different zodiac constellations are behind the sun and therefore not visible. It takes one year for the Earth to complete a trip around the sun, and during that year, the sun appears to move into each of the 12 zodiac constellations. They are Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricornus, Sagittarius, Scorpius, Libra, Virgo, Leo, and Cancer. Other constellations you might have seen in the sky include these, whose stories are available in the space section of the website dkfindout.com. We have Orion the Hunter. Orion represents a giant hunter of Greek mythology. In the sky, he is depicted raising his club and shield against a charging bull, Taurus, which forms the neighboring constellation. Orion is one of the easiest constellations to find due to his distinctive belt right here, made from three stars. 
Orion's dog, Sirius, can be found in the sky nearby. Orion is said to have been a skilled hunter, but died from a scorpion's sting. Speaking of which, Scorpius represents a scorpion sent by the goddess Artemis to kill the hunter Orion in a story from Greek mythology. Orion and Scorpius are said to be enemies and never appear in the sky at the same time, with Orion fleeing beneath the horizon as Scorpius rises in the sky. Scorpius is fairly simple to find as it has many bright stars and forms the distinctive shape of a scorpion's tail. Cassiopeia is named after a mythical queen from ancient Greece. The story goes that she thought she was the most beautiful woman in the entire world, and everyone in her kingdom disliked how vain she was. But one day she offended Poseidon, the sea god, and he decided to punish Cassiopeia by placing her in the sky upside down on her throne. She is depicted sitting in a chair and combing her hair. In the sky, Cassiopeia forms a W shape. Ursin Major, or the Great Bear, is also known as the Big Dipper. Ursin Major depicts the beautiful Callisto, who was transformed into a bear by the goddess Artemis. The constellation's brightest stars resemble a saucepan, popularly known as the Big Dipper. Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper, um, is depicted here. Early stargazers saw the eight stars of Ursa Minor as the shape of a long-tailed bear, like Ursa Major, only smaller. Today, we think of Ursa Minor as the constellation that contains the Little Dipper, a star group which looks like the Big Dipper, but is smaller and not as bright. At the end of the Little Dipper's handle is Polaris, the North Star. This is the only star that doesn't seem to move at all. It remains over the North Pole and always shows which direction is north. For thousands of years, Polaris has helped travelers to navigate. All right, it's time for us to make our craft. So I chose the constellation of Orion, but you can choose any constellation you'd like to make. If you picked up one of our bags, we gave you a little card of a sample constellation to make but you can make any one that you like, or you can make up a constellation of your very own and come up with a story as to why it exists. So let's turn our camera down and we're going to take a piece of brown construction paper and our stars. And I think I will make Orion again. He's one of my very favorites and it is easy to find. So <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, and I'm going to use my little card here to show me where my star sticker should go. So I think we should start with the top corner, and that is going to be this star right here, which is called Betelgeuse. And we're going to do the next one right down here, which is called Bellatrix. Now we're going to make the bottom part. Oh, let me make it so you all can see this. All right, so let's have our next piece of our constellation right here. And then we need one more right here. That's Rigel or Rigel. And now we need to make the belt. So we're going to do one and two and three. All right, and now we need to take our white pencil or crayon or chalk and we're going to connect the stars so that we can see the outline of the shape of Orion. All right. And it's just like connect the dots. And you can make it as detailed and intricate or simple as you like. And so here is my version of Orion the Hunter. All right, and now I have a little bonus activity for you all. Uh, we are going to um, make a straw rocket that you can use to explore outer space if you so choose. Um, you'll need to draw a picture of a rocket, or if you picked up your bag, we gave you a rocket, and you can color it in in any design or pattern you like. If you're making your own, you can make it any size or shape that you like. You'll just need to take 
the back, the top part of your pipette and tape it to the back. And it's gonna look just like this. I think you can sort of see there. So you want the top to be sealed and closed so that your straw doesn't go out the end, all right? And so the air that you expel into the straw will go up, get contained in the pipette and shoot your rocket through space. All right, so that's all that you'll need. And you can just blow on the end and off it goes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's program. Come by the library to check out more books on the constellations, including some of these that are some of my very favorites. And hopefully you can go outside and find some of these constellations in your very own night sky. Uh, next month's STEAM for Tweens will be all about weather. Don't forget to register for a supply bag to pick up everything you'll need to participate at home. In the meantime, head over to our website, FauquierLibrary.org, click on the research button and select science, math, and environment from the list shown. There you'll find Science Online, a resource featuring articles, videos, experiments, and activities to enjoy on a range of scientific topics. Thanks for watching.